What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Uh, this week, we're actually going to be diving back into another Unreal Engine audio tutorial. And this is one that I've wanted to tackle for quite a while. I uh, just needed the chance to set it up. And that is creating an in-game jukebox system for your player. So let's say the player is running through the level. Instead of having just one music track for them to listen to, uh, you've actually got a couple set up here. And so we've got some music set up and your player can actually cycle uh, between the tracks by using the N and the B keys. And you can actually set this up however you want. That's uh, just kind of how I have this current one set up. So that's what we're going to be diving into. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. With that being said, let's get started. All right, so I've got a brand new level here in Unreal Engine, and you can see in the content browser, the only thing that I actually have in here is just the map data, and that's because I hit the save button and it asked me to save the map. Other than that, there is literally nothing in this project. So what we're gonna do to get this started is we're actually gonna start outside of Unreal Engine. And once we've got our, our level set up here and saved, what we wanna do is we actually wanna go into our documents folder here. And we wanna go to the, the folder where the project is saved we're going to go under content and we are going to create a folder and we're going to call it movies. Now I know it seems a little odd that we're calling this movies, even though we're dealing with audio, but what we're going to do is we're going to end up setting up a media player and by default, the media player pulls from this movies folder. And in order for your audio to be packaged with the game, it has to be in this folder. Now, you may also be asking, well, why didn't we just create a folder in the content browser? And here's why. So when we go into movies, I've actually already got some audio tracks set up here. And I'm going to drag these over. And what's going to happen is in Unreal, you're going to get this little pop up down here in the corner, letting you know that uh, some changes were made to the content folder and asks if you want to import them and we want to say yes. Now after all the audio tracks have imported, uh, if we look here in this movies folder now, we're gonna see duplicates for each file. Uh, one is gonna be a .wav, the other one is gonna be a .u asset. Now if we were to have created this inside Unreal Engine and just imported by dragging into Unreal Engine, all we would have had is this .u asset. We wouldn't have had the .wav and we need that dot wave in this movies folder because we're going to be referencing the actual wave files a little bit later so i'm going to go ahead and just pull this back off over here and inside our movies folder you can see that now we have all 10 of our audio files i'm actually just going to bring this over because we don't really need the editor window just yet now, what I'm gonna do just to kind of keep my folder hierarchy organized is I'm gonna go back to my content folder here and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just gonna call this uh, jukebox data. And this is where all of the kind of inner workings for our jukebox are gonna be held. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up so inside our jukebox data folder, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here and we're gonna go down to media and we are going to go to file media source. And we actually have to do this for every single audio track individually uh, that, we're, that we're adding to the jukebox. So I'm gonna show you one and then I'll just fast forward through the others. So you can actually name these whatever you want. If you want to name them track one through whatever, uh, personally, I'd like to do the name of the song. That way it just kind of helps me know exactly which file is for what item. So I'm going to go ahead and name this one hyperspeed because that's the first track that I'm going to pull in. And if we double click on this, we're going to get a file path. And this is why we wanted those wave files inside that movie folder. So if we go ahead and open this up, we're gonna click on hyperspeed, open, and then we can save it. 
So now we just need to go ahead and do this for the rest of the songs that we're importing. All right, so now that we have a file media source for all of our tracks, we're gonna right click on here and we're gonna go back down to media. And this time we're gonna go to media playlist. And we're just gonna call this uh, jukebox underscore PL for playlist. That way we know what it is. And we're gonna double click on this. And you could go through one by one and just add um, your different media file sources. But a shortcut is you can actually come down here and just double click on these and they'll automatically get added. And so you can see that we've got 10 items here and they actually start with zero through nine. That's just kind of how things are referenced. Zero is actually one with nine actually being 10. And this is gonna serve as our playlist index. So we can go ahead and save this and close it. And now we're gonna right click again, go to media, and we need to add a media player. Now, as soon as you click on media player, you're gonna get this pop-up window that asks if you want to output the video output to a media, media texture. And since we're just doing audio, we don't wanna select that, and we can just go ahead and hit okay. And we're gonna call this uh, our jukebox player. Now uh, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And if we were to hit our jukebox PL here, double click on it. So you can hear that all of our songs are gonna be referenced by this media player. We can go ahead and hit save and we can close this back out. So in terms of setting up all the files for our jukebox player, uh, we're actually finished. So what we need to do now is we need to configure this so that it plays within the level. And we're gonna do this by right clicking yet again, but instead of going to media, we're actually gonna click on blueprint class and we're gonna add an actor blueprint and we'll just call this uh, jukebox underscore BP. And again, you can name these however you want. This just kind of helps me and we're going to open up our blueprint here and in the viewport we're going to go up to add component and we want to go to a media sound component and once we've got our media sound component over here uh, over here on the right under media player we can go ahead and add our jukebox player go ahead and compile that and save it because save often otherwise you lose stuff and if you wanted to set this up in a way that it sounded like it was actually coming from a radio, you could build in attenuation and allow spatialization and that sort of thing. For what we're doing here, it's just going to be the, the 2D sound inside the level. So I'm not gonna worry about that, but you're more than welcome to dive into that if you wanna kinda create this in a way that fits your specific project. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna come under our event graph and we don't need this event actor begin overlap or the event tick. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, we will end up using this event begin play just for this project. Um, again, this blueprint is actually gonna be customizable to what you wanna set it up as. The way I'm gonna set it up is that as soon as you hit play on the level, the music will start and then we'll be able to control it. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to come over here to our variables and we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call this our media player. And with our media player selected over here on the right under variable type, we're gonna type out media player here as well. And under object types, we wanna get a reference to that media player and the next step, in order to get this um, value to show up, we first actually have to compile that. So if your value is not showing up, try compiling it first. After we compile it, we are gonna get this media player option here, 
and we are going to select our jukebox. Now once again we're going to compile and save and now over here on the left under our variables we can drag this media player out and we are going to get the media player. Now from here we're going to go ahead and drag off our media player and we want to open the playlist index right here. And so what we technically can do is we can drag this event begin play and in our playlist we want to select the jukebox playlist that we created and we can compile this and save it and if I move this out of the way and drag our blueprint in technically from here if we hit play you can hear that it works the issue is we don't have control over it so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this blueprint back over here and what we can do is we can also drag off of our media player and let's say we want to be able to get the next track we can select next we'll pull up here again and do previous and we can set these to whatever key press that we want um, just like in the intro video I actually have these set to the N and B keys so we're gonna go keyboard and find our N key for next and I'm gonna drag off this and I'm gonna get the B key um, for back even though P is previous uh, because what I'm also going to do is that I didn't have in the intro video is I'm going to have the ability to also pause this. So we're going to go pause. And one of the extra steps that we have to do with pause is if we hit the, say we set up the key, uh, the letter P for pause. If we hit P, it'll pause the track. But if we hit P again, it's still trying to pause the track. So we need to pull off one more time and we're gonna get play. And we're gonna go ahead and get our keyboard, the letter P, and we don't wanna connect this directly to these. We want to do a flip-flop. And so we can connect A to pause and B to play. Now, if you've gotten this far in the tutorial, don't go running to your blueprint or your level just yet. And I'll show you why. Uh, is because if we hit play, we still don't actually have control over these. So I was hitting the N and the B keys and they weren't doing anything. And I'll show you why. It's because we actually need to come back up here to our event begin play, and we need to enable input. And on the player controller, we need to get player controller. Now, if we compile and save, So now we have full control and that's pretty much it when it comes to setting up the the blueprint now I am gonna give you a little bit of bonus because I'm sure somebody's gonna ask how I set up the the text in the intro video to display the names of the tracks so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pull in a cube here and I'm just gonna give something like a backdrop for our text to be seen on. And we're going to go ahead and grab a text render and pull this in and flip it around. And so that we can see this a little easier, I'm going to change the text color to black. And our world size, let's just bump it up 
there should be fine. And we'll move it out so it's not clipping through the wall. There's probably still some space back there, but that's not really all that important for this demo. Now, we're not going to be doing this part in the jukebox blueprint. We're actually going to be doing this in the level blueprint. So with our level blueprint, uh, we're gonna actually going to end up using this event tick so we can get rid of the event begin play. And just like we did in the jukebox blueprint, we need to set up a variable. And again, I'm just going to call this media player. And variable type. That will be a media player as well. Again, compile to get this media player value to show up. And we're going to call it our jukebox. So now we can come in here and we're going to get. And we also, since we have our text renderer selected, uh, we can also create a reference to that text renderer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the text render and we are going to set text and we need to then give it a value to set the text to. So off of this media player we're going to drag off and go get media name and the return value is what we're going to set to this and we're going to grab our event tick and that's going to do our set text so we're going to go ahead and compile this save it we can go ahead and close our blueprint so now when we open our player So what it's doing is it's actually getting the name of that media file from the playlist and then it's rendering that to the text field. And I mean, you can come in here and align this center so that it kind of looks a little bit better and fits into whatever your media is that you're putting this text on. But that was just some bonus content because I know some people are gonna ask. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap things up for this week's video. I hope that you found this information resourceful. Uh, I tried learning about this and it just took so many different tutorials to piece this together. So I wanted to go ahead and create one fairly short tutorial. That way you guys could just find the information and go. Remember, there is still a week left to get your entry in for the I Challenge You to sound design this clip number six. Make sure you, when you upload those videos to YouTube, you use hashtag the sound effects guy in the title. That way I can find it. I will be doing a live stream on the 16th where I go in and review the entries that were submitted. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord channel, uh, you're more than welcome to join. There will be a link in the description below. Until next time.